digitizing your wardrobe is it worth it so i digitized my entire wardrobe and been logging my clothes for around the last six months and i'm here to give you my thoughts now first i want to mention there are lots of different apps out there to help you digitize your wardrobe some notable ones i've seen recently are wearing such as hannah witten showed in her video a closet which with wendy she did a video on so I had a look around all of them and I felt like A Closet was the one that best suited what I was looking for and felt fairly well developed. I liked the look and feel of the app and a lot of the key functionalities. So then I decided to upload all my clothes. This took me around a day with A Closet in putting a lot of other details such as item names, categories, seasons, prices, brands. It was made more rapid by functionality such as the background removal and I did have a fair number of clothes to upload, around 300, also including shoes, bags and belts. My thoughts on the upload process is it was pretty smooth, however there are a couple of things that would have improved. So for me, I was starting from order that I already owned, so it would have been quite useful for me to input the number of times I reckon I'd already worn an item beforehand. But this is fairly minor and not really an issue if you're uploading new items purchased and it's particularly easy if you were purchasing new items to upload them by putting your website link in and selecting what the item is you don't even have to take photos of it you just take the items photos from the website so what did i find out in the stats now this was an interesting part so in the app there's a clothes stat setting and this shows me what my items are made up of so for me i had 301 items in my closet. Apparently the average is 118, so I guess I'm a little bit above that, but I have put out my clothes a lot. My closet was estimated worth around 5,000 pounds. That seems like a lot, but bearing in mind, this is probably me collected over most of my adult life. And a lot of these items were gifts and I would still put the estimated amount in, along with some charity shop purchases. I probably sometimes over egged it. In terms of what my wardrobe was comprised of, it was 47% tops. 14% dresses and 12% trousers. Within tops, had 140 tops, 42 dresses, 36 pants. That also includes kind of tracky bottoms, jeans and shorts. 24 pairs of shoes, 22 other items, that scarves, belts and eyewear, so sunglasses. 19 items of outerwear, so that's kind of coats, blazers, cardigans. 10 bags, five skirts, and two items of headwear. This kind of told me that I probably overdo it a little bit on the tops, but my personal style, that's where I like to vary things more than the bottoms. It also showed which brands I purchased from the most. So for me, this was Crew Clothing with 16 items and H&M, again with 16 items. I then had a number from M&S, Primark, Fatface, My Protein, Hollister, Nike, Gap, Great Plains, White Stuff, but actually, they're not huge numbers, so I do actually have a huge variety of clothing brands and I think this is because I do a lot of charity shopping so some more vintage brands will come up. Then it also showed me a colour breakdown and I think this was fairly telling as to my colour palette. I didn't have a lot of colour in here. So it was 24% black, 17% navy, then kind of neutral colours, so 9% white, 8% light grey, 7% dark grey, 4% beige, some blue, um, so really a good two thirds of it is kind of all that typical neutral colour palette. But I did have some fun colours in there. So pink, turquoise, yellow, colourful, green. So a good variety. And this is quite interesting to see what is in my wardrobe. And also maybe help me when shopping as what my colour preferences are. Then the utilisation side was what appeared after I've been tracking my clothes for a bit. So after around six months, this was amazingly over the winter, I found that I used around 62% of my winter closet. Now, some of the items that I uploaded, such as party wear, I put as being across all seasons, when actually maybe I'd more wear them in the spring and summer, so there might be a little bit of misclassification. And I think there's also an element of a lot of my scarves are classed as winter. And I definitely didn't wear all of them this winter, only a few. So that's potentially an area I could cut down on. Now, this was quite useful to see in this section of hidden deep within my closet for items that I haven't yet worn. And it also showed items that I have a high cost per wear. So where they're quite expensive, I haven't worn them that often. One thing I did notice here is with the issue that I mentioned previously, it meant that items I used to wear a lot, maybe don't wear quite as much this year, or I don't have a use to them right now, end up having a really high cost per wear, even though I've worn them a lot in previously. 
It also showed me what my most worn items were for the winter and that was unsurprising. So my kind of regular trainers that I wear, my winter coat, some underlayers, my cycling jacket, it's only a minute, but there were other things I'd rather prioritise in my day. And if I forgot it after a few days, it was really hard for me to remember exactly what it was that I'd worn a few days prior. So one thing I'd really like to see improved on the utilisation stats was for items that haven't been worn, I would like to be able to see a lot more of them and to either see or export all the items, their number of wares and cost per wear, just because I found it really hard to absorb easily the number of wares. So being able to have a filter to then show less than five wares or sort from lowest wares to highest wares would be really helpful for me to go through my closet and maybe power it down a bit. So another thing that's interesting about the utilisation is you can actually see your outfit of the day calendar. And what this essentially looks like is pictures on every day of the main outfit that you wore. If you wear two outfits, so if me often cycles, I end up having my cycle outfit and then I watch what I actually wore at work. Only one of them will show up, but you can easily see what items it is that you're wearing and if there's a particular pattern or something that I found was quite interesting is if I had been ill I would basically just be wearing the same clothes for a couple of days or very slouchy clothes for a couple of days but this was interesting to kind of scroll through and a bit satisfying to see that I did see a good job of tracking but I did notice as it went throughout the six months that there were more and more gaps where I just hadn't tracked the clothes couldn't remember and I honestly didn't have the energy to go back and correct I'll come on to it in the end of this video, but I actually have a slightly different way of outfit tracking that I'm going to go back to. Now, of course, to get these utilisation sites, I had to track the outfits. So I'll just show you a little bit of how this works. So initially, this was super, super exciting. And I actually quite enjoyed noting down what I'd worn. And I was able to set up a few set outfits. So for example, one of my casual looks on a Saturday, as well as my cycling look, because I cycle to work. It probably took about 30 seconds to a minute. And honestly, after a while, this began to feel a bit like a chore. The other thing which this app does, and a lot of the other ones do as well, so I think Hannah Witten made a good suggestion of the wearing app is a bit like the closet from Clueless, where you get to swap around things. A Closet also had this. And I did find the outfit suggestions interesting. So it took my location and the weather to help make suitable suggestions for the weather. They were generally pretty good. I'd find that fairly nice items we paired together. And it did make me think about outfit combinations that I maybe wouldn't have thought of. And I do think this was actually pretty well done and the pairings were generally good, but there was the occasion where something that I'd tracked that was maybe more pajama or slouchy would be included in the outfit suggestions. It was fairly good, however, in letting you refresh it if you didn't like the suggestion, or being able to change the occasion. So for example, put casual, smart casual and formal, which is all based on how I initially input the clothes. You could also feedback saying if you liked it or didn't like it. However, I generally didn't find myself using this feature. And for me, it was more of a nice thing to occasionally look at rather than a core part of the app's offering for myself. It could be something that you, of course, are more interested in. Now, I did mention that I would show my much simpler solution and um, this is something that I've been doing for a number of years now and is a method that I'm actually going back to because, spoiler, I don't think this app entirely works for me. And it's really simple. It's basically taking a hanger and a piece of paper. Now what I do is I have a colourful hanger or a slightly different hanger to the other hangers in my wardrobe and I put it myself on the far left hand side. Then whenever I've worn an item from the right hand side, I'll then put it to the left hand side of this hanger, which is then my section of clothes that I've worn and the right hand side is the clothes that I haven't worn. I then challenge myself to keep choosing from the right hand side of clothes that I haven't worn and continually kind of having this tracking of what I haven't yet worn as items move from the right to the left. What I then find is it gets to a point in my wardrobe where everything on the right hand side I either don't want to wear for a particular reason, i.e. a special occasion where I don't have a use for it right now, or it's something I actually maybe don't want to style or don't want to wear, in which case I know it's time to find the item another home. So that works well for hanging items. And then for items that are in drawers, I'll put a piece of paper and have a very similar method. So for me, I generally put it at the back and then I will pick items from the front when I've worn them. I will put them then behind the piece of paper and I know everything that's in front of the piece of paper is the items that I haven't worn yet and I should probably look at incorporating them and wearing them or think about letting them go. If you're interested, I can make a separate video on my wardrobe organisation and the in my opinion, a slightly easier version of tracking that I'll do. 
So in summary, what are my final thoughts? So for me, I didn't really enjoy tracking every day. I didn't really use the outfit suggestions. And I have another method for tracking usage, which I personally prefer. However, if you prefer a more statistical version of your usage and like the idea of the outfit suggestions, this could be for you. I also think it was really interesting to see the stats of my wardrobe. And I actually know a few people who don't use it as a tracking tool, but use it as what they have in their wardrobe. So if they're out and about and they're tempted by an item, they can actually look up, okay, what white shirts do I have? And they see they have enough and they therefore are helping to curb their purchases by having at their fingertips a view of their wardrobe. So that's my overall thoughts on tracking my wardrobe with an app. As I mentioned, there are many other apps out there. I hope you found this video useful. And if you do have any particular questions, do leave them down in the comments box below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Please do consider subscribing for other videos. And maybe if you have adopted one of these apps and you're thinking about how you could then begin to rehome some of your wardrobe, check out my video on how to sell on Vinted, which hopefully gives you a few trips and tricks on how to get started. See you soon.